Welcome to part six of lecture five of block body aerodynamics. So we've kind of talked about all the individual effects. Let's now kind of summarize what we've seen. All of these effects can be considered sort of similarly, similarly and can be categorized into one of four types. So either there's this sort of saturation effect where, um, you know, sort of define our parameter as rho, where rho is sort of, you know, perhaps a radius over, you know, characteristic length of the vehicle. Um, and you know here where we get sort of, sort of some drag reduction up to a point and then it stops. There's the asymptotic behavior where it kind of drops continuously, but the rate of decrease get, gets less and less and less as the parameter grows. We have sometimes a minimum where if the parameter is very small or the parameter is very large, the drag grows and there's sort of a happy medium. And then we have this step behavior where there's maybe a rise, a dip, a rise, a step down, and then sort of a constant value. These are all of the things we've seen fit into one of these four categories. And we have sort of some indicators to suggest the type of function to expect. So basically, we're expecting to get uh, the saturation type when we have edges and cross flow. We should expect to get the asymptote type when we have inclination or tapering. We should expect to see the minimum when there's two opposing effects in play, for example, the tailgate height. And we should see the step when the character of the flow suddenly changes, for example, going from a square back versus a pass back flow features based on the rear window inclination angle. Finally, I want to talk a little bit about interference effects and look at mutual interference. So we've already discussed the, discussed the idea of interference drag much earlier in the course. Here we're going to briefly focus on the idea of how knowing what the interacting flow field looks like can cause change in the desired shape of the add-on part. So we'll use side mirrors as an example. Right? Um, if the mirror was just on its own, and it, it would have the lowest drag by being symmetric, left to right. Um, but the incidence of the flow is not coming straight at this thing. Because of the presence of the A-pillar of the vehicle, um, and the windshield, the flow is kind of coming at this thing at high incidence and the stagnation point is more likely somewhere over here. So this means that we're going to end up getting a big separation on the outside um, and it effectively means that there's a larger area, essentially this cross-sectional area here, instead of just this area, that the base pressure acts on. So we can basically shape the mirror based on the known flow features to reduce the drag. So we can match the shape to match the flow incidence. Um, this increases the base area, but the flow stays attached all the way to the back, and this reduces the actual drag. Um, so the CD, yes, is higher, but the CD times A goes down. So to summarize, uh, what we've learned today is that minimalist changes to vehicle shape can significantly alter the drag. It's often possible to get close to sort of ideal values with practical shapes with some, some careful optimization. And sometimes re reducing the drag coefficient can actually increase the drag force if the frontal area rises in consequence. Normally we need to ensure that the frontal area stays constant with any changes. This constrains how much curvature can be added on the roof and the sides without sort of too negatively impacting the occupant space inside the vehicle. And interference effects between parts guide the design of add-on components, so we use the knowledge of the flow field to shape components like side mirrors.